Hello everyone, Stepan here from Civils AI. In this video, I wanted to talk about how AI can be used in structural engineering. I'm going to talk a little bit about how we've been using it at Civils AI. Over the past two years, obviously, we've been inundated with AI hype. We've, I, I personally have lost count of the number of times I've been told I'm using ChatGPT incorrectly in posts on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, but in terms of structural engineering specifically, I'm willing to bet a lot of you have not actually used it in your line of work so far. So what I want to really do is dive into how it could be used within your field itself. So the three topics that I want to cover in this video uh, I want to talk about design optimization. So in structural engineering, I want to talk about how we can optimize some of our designs. I also want to talk about um, in terms of information management, managing design information and how this can be assisted using generative AI like large language models. And I also want to talk about structural health monitoring, which is, I guess, quite a new uh, or newer phenomenon um, and a new way of us like thinking about the whole life, life cycle of buildings. So these are the three things I want to talk about today. So number one, design optimization. As structural engineers, we have to consider many different moving parts when we're doing our designs. We have to think about uh, all of these interlinked elements things like material types, geometric constraints, loading requirements, even things like budgets and sustainability criteria like carbon targets for the project. We have so many things to think about if you're trying to do a design, not to mention being pulled in different directions from different people on the project relating to constructability, um, yeah, people, quantity surveyors talking about costs. We have all these things to think about, all these different criteria when we're actually doing our designs and structural analysis. So how exactly can we manage this without our heads exploding from all of the different considerations? So what I want to show you is how um, we typically would do uh, the structural designs. I'll start with a very basic example, which is beam analysis. I think all structural engineers have done this at one point or another in their studying or in part of their work. So I'll start with just talking about beam analysis. Okay, so what we're looking at now is a typical beam analysis calculation. I'm using some software here that we wrote ourselves at Civils AI. So this tool's for beam calculations, for calculating bending moments, shear forces, and deflections for a beam. And so what you'll see here, this is some pre-written example, but what essentially I'm doing here is, let's say I know some load positions here, 12 kilonewtons and 5 kilonewtons. I know that these are around 3 meters, 7 meters, let's say in this case I'm looking at. Um, what I'm able to see here is basically bending moment results, let's say, or shear force results for this beam. Now let's say... Um, I want to do this with more of an AI approach, right? Um, what I can do is uh, the, the, the actual code repository that we used uh, is indeterminate beam, which is written by my good friend, Jesse. Um, so this is open source, uh, the back end for this, these calculations we're doing here, it's open source. So within this Git repository, which is linked here, you're actually able to open up this source code and find how this calculator works. So um, I'll just go into the documentation for this calculator and you'll see for me to actually create some uh, calculation here and run this analysis to find the shear forces and bending moments. Um, I'm running some code a bit like this in here. So I'm saying from indeterminate beam, I'm importing these different classes. And from here, I'm actually setting up the beam to say, it's, okay, seven meters long. These are the properties. These are the support locations and uh, loads, etc. And then saying, be, analyze this beam and creating some figures. So what you have here is an example of how I've created this code. The difference being here is does the front end, which is essentially just sending information back into this code. If I wanted to use more of an AI approach here, what I could actually do is every time I have inputs here, support positions in this case, 
or um, load loads and load positions. I could actually use a tool like um, a sensitivity analysis library if I wanted to use a more machine learning approach. So this is one such example for Python, which is salib. And this tool actually allows me to test the sensitivity of the different parameters I'm actually putting into this model or to this uh, code here. So what I could do here is I could actually set up the test of the sensitivity of these support positions in this case, or the load positions and the load factors and run this like a thousand times a different analysis to find within that rough configuration that I have, what's the sensitivity of these results. So my shear force, um, how would that vary around some sensitivity around my known uh, support positions and bending moments, for example. So what this as a structural engineer could allow you to do would be to test for your design, if you're gonna submit it, how likely is it that if the contractor or whoever it is who's reviewing it, sends you back some request, oh, we need to move the support positions by 200 millimeters. How likely is it that your design's not gonna work? So with a sensitivity analysis tool, you're actually able to test these uh, the sensitivity of your design to its current configuration. So this would be an AI approach to some structural analysis, in this case, beam analysis. Okay, next up is design management. So as a structural engineer, I'm sure you've worked on projects where the information management and the design management is just not working very well. And you'll find yourself asking questions like, what's the latest information? Um, you'll be submitting designs and being told that this is working with the wrong information. We sent you some update recently. Why haven't you used this? So this design management can be really, really stressful for structural engineers if it's not done correctly. So what we've, um, yeah, and basically it can make or break construction projects. You have some famous examples like Sydney Opera House going 10x over the original budget, uh, mainly due to many design changes and rework issues. Uh, around design coordination. So there's some examples of projects which have really blown the original budget because this hasn't been managed correctly. Um, and because construction projects are dynamic, there's always new updates happening. You'll have new information being sent across from the architect with new floor plans or from the M&E team with new uh, requirements for you know, the structure. So knowing what the latest information is, is really key. So this is something that we have been really working on a lot at Civils AI is finding the latest information uh, so that you can just query, your, uh, query all of the information on the project to answer questions. So I'll just talk you through exactly how we've been doing that at Civils AI. Okay, so in this section, I'm going to be talking about information management on construction projects and how AI, specifically generative AI, can help with that. This is what we've been doing a lot of at Civils AI. So uh, here I am logged into Civils AI and we have different projects set up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one uh, which is essentially just a dummy, dummy project. This is open source data on the Burj Khalifa we've used here. So once I'm signed into Civils AI, I can essentially drag and drop and upload my own documents here. We actually have a free version of Civils AI, so you can try this for yourself for free um, and upload your own files here. Um, in this case, I've uploaded three already, three of these um, open source documents. And what I can do is I can then use this search box up here to search across all the documents for information. So I could ask a question like, what is the concrete strength used for the walls? So what it's going to do here is it's going to look through the different documents on the construction project is going to try and find a section that answers that question for me. So it's found something. So it said the concrete strength used for the walls of the Burj Khalifa Tower, C80 to C60 cube strength concrete. So that's quite a specific answer, actually. Um, by clicking this reference, it will take me to the section of the report where this answer's come from. So it's going to find uh, high performance concrete used in the tower. It's saying this is where the answers come from. So search across the documents, found the answer. If you imagine you have more than three documents on the project, 
this tool can be used to search for the latest information that's perhaps being sent across by the contractor or the uh, you know, architects or other people on the project so you can find the specs and the design details that are relevant to you. Okay, last but not least, we have structural health monitoring. So when we think about construction as structural engineers, quite often we think of just the design part or the construction part um, where you have people laboring and like actually building the thing. But what you really have is that's just 1% of the overall life of the building. The construction part, the design part is just 1%. If you imagine we designed for 150 year design life uh, as a minimum, uh, we have this remaining 99% of operations and maintenance and facilities management when you're actually trying to maintain the building and make sure it's still in its structurally, full structural integrity. So what we have today is lots of modern buildings uh, having IoT sensors, uh, sensors for strains, stresses, temperatures, um, actually being installed within the building itself, within the concrete or attached to steel. Um, and all of this data is being fed back to a central database. Um, we also have tools like drones being used for external surveys of buildings where they're able to scan buildings, create point cloud data and visual information as well, like video recordings. What you have with all of this massive amount of data being uh, relayed back is you have really exciting startups now that are using things like vision intelligence, AI models and AI algorithms to essentially look at all this data and make sense of it and flag things up. So you have tools like, uh, or startups like OpenSpace, which are really exciting. They're, they're using cameras to capture information across buildings and relay this back to central dashboards where this information can be understood. Structural engineers and project managers can review it and decide exactly where they need to intervene and prioritize their own work. So when we have issues in construction, like, you know, not enough people to fill all the jobs that we have, um, and us structural engineers are like running around trying to chase everything, uh, these, this kind of technology can really help us be more effective in where we're working. So this is one area to really look out for. So that's everything for today. Uh, if you found this interesting, please do check us out at Civils AI. Um, we've got tons of free tools, free calculators you might be excited to check out. We also record plenty of videos on uh, all sorts of things in construction, mainly AI topics recently, um, especially with our line of work. So please do check that out and we're always trying to release new things. Uh, I in particular want to draw your attention to my video, which is on AI agents in construction and how you can actually create your own. So in that video, I explain how you can start coding your own AI agents. So if you've liked this uh, sort of intro, then jump into that one and find out how you can code this stuff yourself. Thank you very much for listening and until next time.